We've got everything here. Come on, fishy. The cool thing about a dock, it's good all year. You know, when you have a lake with a dock, it's a very good pattern to start and just check. I mean, no matter where you are, when you're there, you got docks, you probably have them on it. And I've caught them New York, I've caught them under docks, I've caught them in Florida, I've caught them in California, I've caught them everywhere in the country you can fish. If you've got them, it's a very good starting pattern. So it's like they have a, a roof over their head, they have shade, shadows, and they love to hide in those shadows because they're ambush predators. A dock always has, you know, algae growing on it, stuff like that. You'll have shad hanging around it, you'll have bluegill hanging around it. So it is a very viable pattern throughout the year. You know, when I'm going down a bank and I'm looking for good docks, sometimes it's depth that's key. So sometimes you want a dock that's got the deeper water on it. Sometimes it's not the depth, sometimes it's age. You get age and wood poles and things that have just been there for a long time. So you can say, well, there's a fresh dock. I'm not gonna catch them there. There's an old dock. I'll catch them off of that one. In the fall of the year, this stuff right here is, is priceless. You see the foam, you see the, 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 the platforms that are laying on top of it because of the lake fluctuates in a wintertime drawdown. Those type of things, the shad will get up in there and run the edges. And so I actually look for docks that are skinny water, foam, Sometimes it's the very last couple docks in a pocket that you run in in the back. So analyzing a dock is simply, you really want to fish a few, let the fish tell you what they want, what they like, the, the dock that they want to be around, and then just start taking that to the rest of the lake. Sometimes it's a dock that looks absolutely terrible. You're like, oh, there's nothing going to be here. In fact, at Cayuga, I was fishing docks, and, uh, and I came up to one, they were just finishing it, and I said, you know, in another year or two, this dock is going to be really good. And I skip my Ocho way up underneath it and go, oh, catch a four pounder, skip it back up underneath their next one, catch a three pounder. I went, well, it's pretty good right now. So you, I would have expected that to need another year of sitting in the water. Oh no, it was good right then. Right here, I'm looking at all these docks and, and you can see it's real flat and you can even see on my Lowrance, it's real flat. You don't see any contours here at all. So these are real shallow, skinny docks, a lot of grass, a lot of vegetation. When I get right up here, and I can just move this down and show you that right here where these contours get close and I get the couple docks right here, right next to the deep water, that's probably where I'm gonna find them. Just watching your electronics can tell you, is this dock deep, is this shallow? You know, where are they gonna be? The equipment and tackle that I use fishing docks it varies slightly, but if you look at my number one rig, believe it or not, it's gonna be a baitcaster, 17 to 20 pound fluorocarbon line, and pretty much a flip stick. And the reason I like that seven and a half foot flip stick is uh, not only the lightness and, the, and all that, but that it gives me a lot of power and control. So I can still skip up under the docks, but what I can do is when I hook one, he's way back in there, you've got enough power to get them and get them out and work them around the poles which is really important. You see a lot of docks just like this one. It's got a metal pole. The metal gets old and rusty and gets all the corrosion on it and stuff like that, and it can shred your line. You need to be able to get them out. You know, right here I'm using a quarter ounce jig. If I'm using a light bait, so let's say I'm using a little Ocho on a, on a little hook, you know, 10, 12 pound test line, I'm using spinning tackle. But if I'm up any time I go over about 12 pound test, it's gonna be bait caster every time. So it's bait casting rod, fired it up underneath there and the good thing and, and here's a jig and a real good jig for fishing docks is what you want to look at is a light weed guard okay and that allows you to set the hook you're not really banging into a ton of cover you don't need that flipping weed guard that heavy weed guard that just keeps you from hanging anything because it also keeps you from hanging fish so in this case a lighter weed guard great hook good good needle point sharp hook but you see the beefiness it's got a lot of beef to it so you're not going to bend it out tapered head if you look at the tapered head what that does is that allows it to come through cover easier so it comes through the grass it comes through wood it comes through all types of cover good skirt you know good trailer you put all these things together and you've got a great jig well what this actually is is the hack attack swim jig from strike king heavy hook it's got a great weed guard, it's got the tapered head, so it's perfect. Now see, the thing about this, it's quarter ounce. So a quarter ounce means I can skip it underneath docks. If I used a heavier one, it's a lot harder to get it underneath those docks. So if you wanna get way back in where the dark spots are, you can take a quarter ounce and fire it back in there and it still has a great subtle fall. I'll take that one. And that's what you get 
you know, you could see the dock right here. And you can also see the size of this fish right here that decided he's out roaming on a cloudy day. Oh, another good one. All right. Come on up here, big, big pig. So that's what you got. Swim jig, round docks. On a cloudy day like this, what you've got is they'll roam a little bit. So when they're roaming, you got to have something that'll, that you can catch them in between the docks, and that all falls with the Hack Attack Heavy Cover Swim Jig. <laughs> I like it. When I look at a dock, the first thing I want to think of is boat control. What angle do I want to approach it? This angle is semi-okay, okay? And the reason I say that is because most of the time, if a fish is under the dock, now up here he can face anywhere he wants. When he gets on those poles, a lot of times they're facing the bank. And so when they're facing the bank, I want to make sure that they're not seeing me come. So I want to come from the behind them. So a lot of times I'd rather come at a quarter an angle to the front of it, hit some of these outside poles first, maybe skip it back into the dark shadows and shade. So start a little bit deep and then work my way into the shallow because a lot of times I'll catch them in the very last pole just before it hits the bank. And, um, and so I'll actually make one or two casts on the head, then I'll fire one to the very front where it hits the bank, and then I'll work back in the middle. So what happens if I hit, start working my way to it, so I cast one here, one there, one there, well, one that's all the way up in the front may turn and come back. I'd prefer to get him on the first cast up there without spooking him. So here's my, here's my exact pattern of starting. Hit the first outside, skip one up underneath go all the way to the front, then come back to the center, and then wrap the dock. So that's kind of what it is. Outside, all the way up to the inside, and now you've covered the dock, and pretty much that's my attack plan for every dock that I go at. How about I catch this one? Come on. Oh, come on, you big pig. <laughs> I'm loving this. You know what? Inside docks, outside docks, edges, just make sure you fish them because every day you go, there's big old pigs on the docks. Every day.